So uh, I hope you enjoyed the first part. Um, today we will uh, focus on the uh, weapon of the orc, the mm -hmm. burner itself. Uh, we'll have different metal parts and different kind of weatherings on there. Okay. Um, f just for you, so you can see where we're going. Um, it will be a metal like that. And that's uh, why you did this off camera because we can show everything. Yeah, definitely. And it's basically it's just the same. Yeah. Uh, just a different part of the model, but it will look uh, almost the same. So yeah. we'll also uh, try to to show you how to do a small uh, flicker of paint like that. Mm -hmm. uh, also here on the weapon. I've also uh, added the uh, the mask on top. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the face in its full glory with the mask. All right, and then uh, in the third part we'll uh, do something special. Yeah. Um, a rather special t topic indeed. Uh, it will be um, this glove and we will try to paint uh, a little texture on there, um, like a bit like a freehand um, and I want the glove to look like a big oven glove because mm -hmm. I like it, uh, it like fits the burning, <laughs> burning burner boy quite well. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. Okay, we start with the metal parts first and um, I like to do that because uh, afterwards if I paint the, the elements here I want to make sure that I have a clean border and it's easier to correct it with the uh, normal paints, not with the metal paints. So we start with the metal paints. Um, and you're I'm using the uh, scale color again? And half half. Um, I'm starting with the old Game Social color, the tin spits. Ah, okay. Tin bits. Uh, because I, I really like the the brown and uh, the the reddish brown tone, it really fits the the desert like base, and it's also nice to to have uh, like the same tone in the metal. Yeah. Um, we just start um, painting all the parts that we want to be metal uh, with a thin layer of tin tin bits. Uh, it's okay if it covers uh, with two layers or something like that. So. Don't make it too thick. Yeah. And that's probably one of the uh, very early tips that everybody hears is your paints are too thick and you can uh, kind of dilute them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we say that, what that really means is um, that the paints shouldn't have, uh, when you put them on, there shouldn't be a texture to them. There shouldn't be any stripes, for example, in the paint. It should be really smooth and flat. Yeah. You can always apply another layer, but if it's too thick, you can ruin a lot. Okay, so uh, I just marked the parts that I want to be metal. I think uh, I will just quickly um, base coat that off cam. Okay. It's a little boring. Uh, we'll be back once that is done. All right, cool. That is the tin bits. Uh, I really like the color um, because it's really uh, like it's a metal kind of satin. It's mm -hmm. not really like shiny, but uh, it gives a good saturated base coat. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step, uh, most of you know it, uh, you also do it a lot in, in tabletop painting. Uh, you just apply wash. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the, the new shade from uh, Games Workshop, they, that uh, Dark Enough Night shade. It's a bluish uh, kind of wash uh, shade, like, like a desaturated one. I put some on the palette so you can see it. That's a nice contrast against a cold color. Yeah, it's it, warm. Yeah, it breaks a bit the the uh, reddish tone in here. Mm -hmm. And I will just show it on that small part. Yeah. And we'll just continue like that all over the weapon. That way I have like a lining around all the, the elements mm -hmm. and it gives me a good base to start with so more you, controlled do you, do you try to actually put it uh, into the recesses a lot or? Mm, yeah, I think it flows in the recesses quite natural. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, just like that. Not, not I don't shove it in there. Yeah. So there's really no big secret to that. Yeah. And if it's too much, just take the dry the brush a bit on the towel and just soak it up a bit. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll continue with that and we're back for uh, the highlights uh, once the wash is dry. Okay, cool. All right, and again, just uh, not even a few minutes, probably yeah. just a minute. <laughs> yeah. But um, you then uh, dried it with the hairdryer. Yeah. Um, you can see it lost a lot of the, the shininess mm -hmm. that it had before. Um, but it also gives us now the uh, nice surface to do a little wet blending with metallics. Mm -hmm. um, I think this part here is quite nice to show. Mm. It's, uh, it's rather big and you have those nice holes in there. So we will do it on that side and then continue like that on the other side. All right, we start with the uh, layer of the tin bits. and feather it to the sides down here with the wet brush so up here then we go straight for the highlight color place it here where we want the highlight to be really strong I just took some new on the brush. That's what we showed uh, also in part one, that uh, the base color always needs to be wet. That's your wet and wet blending technique. Yeah. Sometimes when you work uh, under hot conditions or like here in the studio with a lot of lamps, uh, you need to be rather fast, but uh, when you paint at home, it, it should be okay. You have more time than you think. Okay, so this, this is already quite nice for the top reflex. Mm -hmm. And you will see this all this area here, if you just add tiny highlights here, it will already look really good. Pull it down here a little. It's always important to continue the, the reflex line, so we would have one here that's running all over the mm. barrels down there. What's the uh, consistency of that, of the white paint right now? It looks pretty thick. Um, no, actually it's, it's not that thick. Mm -hmm. um, it looks thick, but I think it's uh, because of the, uh, the pigments here, they, they, they reflect the light a lot. It's not that thick, if you, if you see here. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's important because um, if it's uh, too thick, It'll not look right. It'll just cover everything, and this this way it just gives a little uh, sheen to it. Yeah, yeah, that angle is uh, quite spectacular, actually. Yeah, I think you see if if you have the light in one direction, it really works. It looks like a natural light reflex on that thing. Yeah. And as you can see, it's not really hard, right? It's um, base color, um, one washes. wash, and then just a little controlled on the highlight side. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so that was really fast, and we just continue the same way on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's mainly the same, so we'll be back once that is completed. Okay, cool. As you can see, I completed that side quickly off cam. Um, you can see on that area here, I just added some scratches to break up the surface. Uh, nothing too big, just some small, um, pretty bright lines. Mm -hmm. And here it's quite nice in that moment, you can see the both both of the reflection lines. Yeah. yeah. And you might think this is from the light, and of course the light enhances it, but this is really what, what's painted now. Nice. Yeah, you can see it. The, actually, it doesn't change. Yeah. You might wonder, that part is still in the uh, original tin bits and the wash color. Um, we will add some, some uh, weathering on there, like this one here on top. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, it's left like that. All right, so the next part we will take care of uh, are those elements here, uh, the painted elements. So this one here will be in, painted in black. This one will be more in sand color. Mm -hmm. And this here also, I think, in, in black, some, some bluish black, something dark. Okay. All right, so we start with the, uh, with the yellow. Mm, we will mix some of the, um, it's called Zahara yellow. We mixed it, uh, we've used that on the pants before and also on the other yellow elements. And that's one of the uh, new scale color paints, yeah. right? I also used it here for the tube back oh, there. Okay. Um, it's not too bright, but it's a nice tone to start with. I'll mix uh, some brown in there to get it a little bit browner because I don't want it to be the same as the yellow back then. Mm -hmm. This uh, is sandy brown from uh, Model Air. Yeah, I think I like the tone. Mm -hmm. The tone works fine. I think uh, later on I will uh, wash it with a little bit desaturated brown to get a, uh, it a little bit down because it's a bit orange at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, let me just uh, cover all those parts in the, in the base tone and then we will show the blending on cam. Okay, cool. You can see those parts here. Uh, the black and white foundation is still shining through. It's just one uh, wash with the uh, nightshade. Mm -hmm. I quite like the color. Uh, it looks a little like my friend Dark Sea Blue. <laughs> um, but we'll focus on, on that element here first. As I said, uh, maybe a small wash with a desaturated brown. This model wash from uh, small wash from from Vallejo. And there it is. around here and then with a wet finger remove it from the top yeah nothing special just a very delicate wash yeah, break up that orange a little bit. It was a little too orange, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You can see also see like a slight transition in there now. Yeah. Okay, we we'll let that dry and uh, retouch it with some highlights. And just add some white to the base color. Mm -hmm. And a little bit lighter. Something is interesting you could just uh, see there a moment ago was that uh, Ben doesn't like draw one complete line around the whole thing. He just lifts the brush a little bit and pushes it in a little bit. So it gets like a little irregular edge which looks much, much more natural than a 
thick line that is just of the same thickness line yeah. all over. I just the first line I made that was not too bright. I made just one line, mm -hmm. and then the other one I just uh, dotted in a bit. Yeah. So we have uh, different um, intensities of line there, right? Yeah. The color was already a little thick, so or dry, so you see that the lines turned out a little thick. Mm. So we can correct that anytime. Just with a thin base color. Yeah, I really like how that uh, I mean this is already a three-dimensional part. Um, if it were flat, you could even paint it like this. Yeah. But it looks very, very... Yeah, we would see that painted painted on 3D effect quite good with the oven glass mm -hmm. for the other side. Okay, what a lot of people in tabletop uh, figures don't do, they would just leave the dark line up here and just keep it uh, as, as kind of a, a, a dark lining outside. Mm -hmm. But I think it's quite nice if you hold it like that, the light would really hit the top. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the model really benefits if you put a light on there then. And again, it's not the whole, you start just putting one color all over, just put a spot in the middle and then kind of feather it out to the sides a little yeah. bit. Okay, and with a thinner glaze, just glaze over the, the thing to even it out a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the next thing would be some small shippings and uh, weathering on there. On the, that burner, we showed two, uh, two different ways of doing a small weathering. Um, one uh, technique will be shown on that part, the other one on this. So I think it's really cool that we can show uh, two techniques on a small part like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take some hull red and mix it with a little black. Which hull red is that? From which? Um, it's from the model air range. Okay. Okay, and I tried to make really small uh, dots and scratches. The secret here really is to make them random, and that's actually not that easy having this kind of random feel to something. Yeah. Often you end up just doing a repetitive uh, patterns and then <laughs> it looks really constructed. So uh, yeah, I just try to find a nice composition for, for those scratches. Okay, so now we have like the dark dots that are like the areas that are chipped away. Mm -hmm. And it makes a huge difference once we add small, tiny light reflexes under it. Mm -hmm. Need to move a little closer to the model. Some people might be asking what brush you're using right now. Um, it's a one from Winsor & Newton. And some people might be surprised by that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think if the uh, tip is fine, like in this, with this, those brushes, yeah, uh, you can easily work in, on details like that with a wand. Yeah, there's a, a misconception that a smaller brush, like a triple uh, uh, zero or something like that, is uh, necessary for these kind of things. It's really just the tip of the brush that's important. Yeah. And uh, especially if you're working on larger surfaces, uh, having a large reservoir, like in this uh, one size brush, 
will actually enable you to paint on the surface much longer. You don't have to kind of get like a little bit of paint and make one scratch and do it again. Yeah, also um, for the wet and wet blending, it's really nice to have those long bristles mm. um, because they carry a lot more paint. You're using the, this is the Winston Newton uh, Series 7 long hair, right? Yeah. Or the long version. <coughs> the uh, small hair version is also nice, but uh, the, I prefer to use that for free hands or something. I really need like 100% brush control. But they're not that good for long blendings. Mm. Okay, I like it, but I think this here needs a little shadow up yeah. here because it's a little... It looks a little flat, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially compared to the scratches. Mm. So I'll take these mix that I've used for the scratches, thin it down a bit. It shows the uh, hull red again. Model yeah, her red, black, kind of black, and it's pretty diluted now. Yeah. You're only trying to hit the top side now, or is it too difficult actually to do that? No, I try to to just shove it in the upper area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like that. I think a little uh, leaking rust would be nice on there. Yeah. There as well. So I'll mix some of the hull red with some of the orange brown that I have here, the mud brown or sandy brown. We could probably make a whole DVD just on rust <laughs> and these kind of effects. Maybe we should. Yeah. Leave it in the comments below if you like that. <laughs> Because that is that is a fascinating subject, and uh, weathering in general is a fascinating subject. Yeah. Yeah, I love weathering. It's uh, it's so nice because you can make uh, give the give like an age feeling to to things. Yeah, and if you consider it's just uh, smooth plastic underneath. Okay, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I think I'll complete the, the black part now and then in the end we see if we need some retouching of the contrast. Okay, cool. Now, that's what happens when you leave uh, Ben alone for 10 minutes to just finish the black part. Yeah. He messes it up. <laughs> I just wanted to have like a small something that catches the eye, in, in, like on a second glance. Mm -hmm. So, some faded checkers here, also here, but it was really just like a ten-minute detail. Those are so nice because they give a lot of detail and catch quite some attention. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think what a lot of people, where a lot of people make mistakes, is uh, that they don't have like a continuous highlight on those mm -hmm. parts. That's why I left that part so we can show how to get a nice continuous highlight on that. Okay, cool. And also the cap here is, is still uh, still needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we'll do the uh, tube first and then the front part. All right, for that technique we need a rather wet brush and we just put a small water film on there. Mm -hmm. Not too wet, but uh, just a little moist. Then we take some white to the tip of the brush. And and we use the just the wet surface to pull the paint. So 
That's actually pretty cool. I did not know that. How to do that. So now we have like one nice highlight over the whole tube. Yeah, very nice. And uh, we'll do the same for the shadow, more mm -hmm. or less the same. Um, we just place it and feather it out, and I think then the tube should look really nice and really 3D. So for the shadow, you're using uh, the brown again, or? Yeah, then how red? Red brush. almost a little bit like a wash, isn't it? Just a little controlled where you uh, fade out into the um, just the wet surface. Yeah, it's like a wet blending with just water actually. It's a little more uh, because you just place it and drag it from color to water. Yeah. And yeah, you can already see, I mean, it looked nice with the, just the yellow and black stripes. And now that highlight uh, on top just really catches your eye. And you got this little gradient into the shadows as well. Pretty nice. Yeah, I, like, I really like the look. I think uh, could need some shadow back here. And uh, for any kind of competition piece, this is the kind of detail you want. First of all, the um, what, uh, yellow and I almost said white and black. <laughs> yellow and black. Uh, catches your eyes from a distance already. I mean, the whole miniature catches your eye from a distance. There's a lot of contrast going on. And then you take it into your hand, and uh, you, see, you see, okay, it's painted very well. It's nice blending. And then you start, in the second glance, you discover all the little things, like the checkers on the, on the black part there, um, the highlight. And those are the things that separate the um, good entries from the really good entries. Yeah, I also like the combination of painted-on details, sculpted details, it's so good that even if you don't sculpt the figure yourself, you can add a lot uh, by just painting it on there. Mm -hmm. That's already that for the uh, for the tube, and the next part would be the weathering on top here. Cool. Okay, so uh, we start with that cap element here. Um, you can see um, the color there is uh, the tin bits and the wash of the, uh, it's called Dark Enough Nightshade. Mm -hmm. um, it's good if you keep that part metal colored but dark. Um, you don't want it to be that bright because it should match a little those small scratches. So we start with the color, uh, I want it to, to be yellow. So because on the yellow you can see the weathering quite nice and it's, it's a nice contrast to the dark part. Mm. Front. Um, we mix a color that is rather light, uh, light mid-tone, so you need some room on top to add some highlights and you need some uh, room for the shadows as well. And rather than just making a clean cover, you just paint the paint on that remains there. So you just start with the uh, little dots. Mm -hmm. Already looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, one important thing is that the paint covers really and you have, because here the metal paint is just shining through quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful and retouch it maybe two or three times. I think the, the look is already quite nice. Um, but you see there is quite a big difference mm. once you add the light and the rust. So um, we'll go for the light next. Okay, make sure you always just hit the upper edge. Don't go all around the, the, the shape with your highlight. Some people uh, paint like that, but I think it looks quite artificial. So just paint it as if the uh, upper edge of the paint would catch some light. Mm -hmm. Mm 
why this is really fast on a small detail like this. Um, when you paint, uh, let's say, a grog tank or something like that, um, then this turns into quite a job, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, but I think it's uh, that more fantasy or science fiction kind of weathering. It's uh, not what you usually do when you do scale modeling. Mm. Um, but I really like that painted weathering effect because it's uh, it fits a lot more to, to our CJ than, than just a, the hairspray technique, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and the hairspray technique on a small miniature like this is almost impossible. I mean, just the effort you would have to put in just to kind of uh, Place cover it. that small part and it, just, it wouldn't work, just too small. And this way you also have a little more control. Now, of course, if you're painting a tank, for example, then you can use all kinds of weathering techniques. There's so many. Yeah, and combine them. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll take some uh, sandy brown. And... A little bit of the hot red to for some oxidation, especially around areas like this this thing here with with moves. Uh, would definitely have some gathered rust. Just some streaks from up here. I think it would be nice to to also add some smoke effect on here, so it looks a little bit more burnt, and we could also cover we could also cover the front nozzle here. Mm -hmm. For the um, burnt effect on the front, I want it to be um, quite burnt, a little bit oily, kind of uh, stained. Mm -hmm. So brown with black would be the the solution. Um, I'll paint the front part that is really uh, dirty with uh, some, some black, just pure black. Also here. Maybe because I don't want to ruin all the, the work that we've done previously on the upper part, I just do it down here. I think it, it works also if it's just down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this now it's just the black. And the amazing effect if you have just the uh, regular black here and some glossy brown ink next to it, the um, the gloss contrast is um, really, uh, really strong. So mm. you, the the black looks a lot flatter than it it's actually is because the the ink is so glossy. Yeah. Just place the ink here in the in between the metal and the black, and then just fade it out with a wet brush, and use the diluted water to with the upper part also brown wash. Mm. Making sure that you're not covering the black parts again, as you just said. Yeah. So it's right next to it, it's uh, glossy, um, and the uh, uh, black, because it's so flat, now looks like, was it the sud or suit, what is it called? Like the chimney black stuff, <laughs> burned ashes. <laughs> Smoky smoke, smoke. Yeah. Yeah. So also some brown here over that part there. A little bit of black. Yeah, nice. And again, it's just that little extra little details like that that make it just come alive. Yeah, I really like the the top and uh, front part. It, it's really nice with the highlight. It catches quite some attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you see it like that, it works. Works really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool. Alright, so next part, part number three, would be the uh, glove mm -hmm. and 
Then we put all the parts together and see how the, the model looks assembled and see if we need some little retouching here and there. So I hope you enjoyed the show and see you for the next video. Yes, and uh, my final words, uh, make sure to leave comments below. We might yeah. give you a shout out That's um, true. as well. And um, if you've got any questions, anything you would like to see, just put it below. Uh, please share and enjoy. And anyone who likes to paint miniatures, uh, definitely tell them about this. And maybe follow us on Facebook or read our blog. Do so. All right. Bye. <laughs> Share and enjoy.